If you have already watched this video, then you might have familiar with Hack the Box. If you have not yet watched that video yet, click the i button now. Hello everyone, I welcome you all to a new video. In this video, you are going to penetrate an FTP server. Let's get started. According to Google, file transfer protocol is a way to download, upload, and transfer files from one location to another on the internet and between computer systems. FTP enables the transfer of files back and forth between computers or through the cloud. Users require an internet connection in order to execute FTP transfers. Let's simplify it with an example. Consider, you are an authorized employee of a company, and you have an important document that has to be uploaded to the company's website. Here at this place, you and the company server interact through the FTP protocol. Here at this place you is the client and the company is the server. FTP is also known as the client-server protocol. And the model is known as the client-server model. If you search on Wikipedia, you can find out what FTP protocols do. Now I think, you got an idea, what is FTP? One more important thing, FTP can also be used to transfer log files from one network device to another, or a log collection server. If you think the log is wasted, and also that has no value, then you are wrong. If an attacker can gain leverage of the logs, then they can extract all kinds of information from them which can later be used to map out the network, enumerate usernames, detect active services, and more. Now let's see some basic working structure of an FTP server. Whenever a port running an active service it means the port is reserved for the IP address of the target to receive requests and send results from. If we only had IP addresses or host names, then the hosts could only do one task at a time. This means that if you wanted to browse the web and play music from an application on your computer simultaneously, you could not. Because the IP address would be used for handling either the first or the latter, but not both at the same time. By having ports, you can have one IP address handling multiple services, as it adds another layer of distinction. In this case, FTP is active on port 21. However, let's add some extra services like SSH. Secure Shell Protocol, and HTTPD, Web Server, in order to explore a more typical example. With this type of configuration, a network administrator has set up a rudimentary core web server configuration, allowing them to achieve the following, all at the same time if need be. Receive, and send files that can be used to configure the web server or serve logs to an external source. Be able to be logged into for remote management from a distant host in case any configuration changes are needed. Serve web content that can be accessed remotely through another host's web browser. FTP is considered as non-standard for FTP to be used without the encryption layer provided by protocols such as SSL TLS, FTPS, or SSH tunneling, SFTP. FTP by itself does have the ability to require credentials before allowing access to the stored files. If an attacker tries to intercept with man in the middle attack, then the attacker can read the content as they are in plain text, which means unencrypted, or human readable form. But, it is not similar to SSH, as its content is in form of encryption. What if the network administrator chooses to warp the connection with SSL TLS protocol? or tunnel the FTP connection through SSH to add a layer of encryption that only source and destination hosts can decrypt, then the attacker is not able to succeed in man-in-the-middle attack. Notice how port 21 has disappeared, as the FTP protocol gets moved under the SSH protocol on port 22, thus being tunneled through it and secured against any interception. However, the situation we are dealing with in this case is much simpler. We are only going to interact with the target running a simple, Misconfigured FTP service. Let us proceed and analyze how such a service running on an internal host would look like. Enumeration. First of all, click on Spawn Machine to start the instance. 
Here on my screen, you can find the fun IP address. Now, let us check if our VPN connection is established or not using the ping command. Now, we are confirmed that our connection is established and the target is reachable. Now, let me start my WSL terminal window. Okay, now our first step is to scan the IP address using nmap. Just type nmap followed by the IP address. Our scan is completed, and we found the FTP service open and running on port 21. However, what if we would like to know the actual version of the service running on this port? Then run nmap script with the help of hyphen SV. In our case, the hyphen SV switch stands for version detection. Using the switch will consequently make our scan take longer but will offer us more insight into the version of the service running on the previously detected port. This means that at a glance, we would be able to tell if the target is vulnerable due to running outdated software or if we need to dig deeper to find our attack vector. We will not be looking at exploiting the server. We will take small steps towards our goals, and the next one will involve simply interacting with the service as is to learn more about how we should approach targets. However, having the service version always helps us gain more insight into what is running on the scan port. Foothold It is the time we are going to interact it with the target. In order to access the FTP service, we will use the FTP command on our own host. It's good practice to have a quick check that your FTP is up to date and installed properly using sudo apt-get install FTP. If you find a similar error then run, sudo apt-get install tnftp. Now again run, sudo apt-get install ftp ssl. Now we have successfully installed the ftp client tool on our terminal. After it has done installing, you can run the ftp. H command to see what the service is capable of. From the help, we can see that we can connect to the target host using FTP followed by the IP address. This will initiate a request to authenticate on the FTP service running on the target, which will return a prompt back to our host. The prompt will ask us for the username we want to log in with. Here is where the magic happens. If you have watched this video before then you know how the misconfiguration appears in an FTP server. If you have not yet watched that click the i button now. A typical misconfiguration for running FTP services allows an anonymous account to access the service like any other authenticated user. The anonymous username can be input when the prompt appears and keep the password blank and hit enter. Now, we can see that we are logged in successfully. Our terminal changes in order to show us that we can now issue FTP commands. Typing in the help command allows us to view which commands are available. Some of the commands listed here seem familiar to us. We already know how to use ls and cd commands. Let us issue the first command and view the contents of the folder. As you can notice from the output, the operation of FTP services also issue the status for the commands you are sending to the remote host. Now, we can proceed to download the flag.txt to our host. In order to do so, we can use the git command, followed by the name of the file we want to download. In our case, use get flag.txt. This will trigger the download of the file to the same directory you were in when you issued the FTP command. If we exit the FTP service, we will see the same file on our host now. We can now take the flag and submit it on the platform in order to own the box. Before that, you have to solve these problems. 
Don't worry I will give the answers in my blog. If you have any doubts or queries on my video, then write me a comment in my comment section.